as I'm concerned. I love Paul. I love Marisol. But Veronica, you you stole that. You stole that scene. And you are the part. But I think back of course as CEO, that was easily my favorite scene over any of them. That particular scene. Because it just, I don't know, there was just something about the way it all worked. And they did not upstage you at all. You were the you were center stage and it and you were and you owned it. You owned that scene. So very, very good. Yeah. Very good on you. Um, that was that was really neat. And I remember thinking that when I was watching it, I was just like, wow, this is this girl definitely has what it takes to continue and, and really be a, a major a major player as you continue to as you continue to get more experience. So and as you get older. So I want to welcome you to another episode of Media from the Heart. My name is Ruth Hill and I'm your host. And today I have the star of Christmas CEO, a very special movie that Hallmark premiered last year during their countdown to Christmas movie celebration. But it's not the two leads. Oh no. Veronica Marin Estrada. She played the lovely supporting cast member. I mean, she was amazing. You might remember her as the girl who stole the show and played this amazing guitar song, sang it, all this kind of stuff. It was amazing. It was fantastic. Well, it just so happens that some time ago, I was able to have a chat with her and it was amazing. As you can imagine, Veronica is incredible. She has two incredible parents I've gotten to know as well. But today, this was Veronica's chance to shine. So I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the wonder, the amazement, Veronica. Enjoy. I want to welcome all of you to another episode of Media from the Heart. My name is Ruth Hill and I am your host. And today I am so excited. Okay, probably always excited to have a new podcast. But in this case, I have a young person with me. In, from the, in the, she's very active in the film industry and many other things as well. But I am so excited because she's actually my first young person to bring on my podcast. I've been interviewing young people for a long time in this business, but she's the first young person to bring on my podcast. So this is Veronica Marin Estrada, and it is so nice to have you here. And I want to read a really great, I have a fantastic little bio to read about her at, by way of introduction. Veronica Marin Estrada is a grade eight student from Munns Public School in Oakville, Ontario. She debuted this past holiday season in the Hallmark movie, Chris's CEO, in the role of Emma, a spark in the story that promises to bring joy, drama, and comedy to the whole family, which it certainly did. Veronica sings, plays the guitar, and acts. She is an eloquent, spontaneous, and active teen within her local arts community. She started her performing career by participating in the theatrical roles when she was a toddler and got her first commercial when she was four years old. In her debut film, Chris's CEO, she got to act along with Marisol Nichols, who I absolutely love, and Paul Green, who happens to be my employer. Both were very supportive and inspiring, along with the director, Jonathan Wright. Veronica's family is thrilled with this opportunity that she got. Like her, they understand the need of young teens to have the support to help them in the performing path. Veronica Marin Estrada was born in the USA while her Venezuelan parents were assigned to career projects in California. As in the movie, the balancing act of business and personal life changed the family path, making them choose the greater Toronto area as their new home and country. The family is very active in collecting, packing, and shipping carrying boxes for families and children in Venezuela. When Veronica's parents asked her how she felt about her first movie experience. Her answer was, I can't see myself doing anything else. That is 
absolutely fabulous, Veronica. I love this file. When, I, when your mom sent it to me, I was so excited to get to read it because I saw so many great things in it. But I love the fact that you said you cannot see yourself doing anything else because that is what actors will say. They'll always say, what's your advice to young people will ask them who want to enter filming and TV? They'll say, well... We want, we, we want to make sure that they really want to do it. So, that, so if they can see themselves doing anything else, they should go do They should go do something else. But if all you can do is act, if all you can do is entertainment and the arts, then go for it. So uh, is, that is fantastic. And I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Good. I'm, I'm so glad. And, and it was, it was really interesting. So the thing that I discovered that I didn't know, of course, there's probably a lot of things, but you actually were born in the USA and your parents are Venezuelan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so, um, can, do you know, other than I know your, your parents came to, from Venezuela to California for some career opportunities but was there, so are you able to tell us a little more about, about their journey, about why they came to this, to the U.S.? Yeah, well, I don't actually know the full story, obviously, because I was, like, literally a year old, but um, I do know that when I was, like, a lot younger, we did a lot of moving around. Um, you know, there's, my dad has been working at the same company since, like, right after I was born. So there's always been a lot of moving around, but I think that's just part of my journey, I guess. And um, I, I always love learning more about how my parents came here. It's always very interesting. Oh, that's cool. And the fact that you ended up in Toronto, because see, I'll be honest, before I read all that and really got into doing my research about you, I assumed that your family was uh, that you were born in Canada. I just had that assumption. And so what was the reason? So was it because of all the things that you were doing in film and TV and commercials? Is that what brought you to Toronto? I think it was just the community here, you know, um, especially in the being Hispanic, there's not a lot of us. <laughs> well, there wasn't a lot of us, but in Toronto and in the GTA area, we started meeting, like, well, my parents started meeting more and more people from our community, and I think that's what really drew us here. Um, also because of um, the amount of different cultures in the GTA that um, I get to learn about and be surrounded by growing up, I think that's very important. Let's see. Yeah, you know, that is true, because I'm thinking, I, I, I've not been to Toronto, now I've been to Vancouver, and in Vancouver, this has been a few years, but I didn't really see a lot of Hispanics that were in that area. So it's kind of interesting. I, you, don't, you don't typically think of Canada as a place where there's a lot of Hispanics, but that's interesting to hear. So, so in Toronto, there, there is more of a community, a Hispanic community now. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. And um, also, especially because in Toronto, the lifestyle was very similar to California, you know, um, the city and all that, and it was also quite similar to, um, it was the same time zone as Venezuela, so we could also um, talk to our family without having to worry about, like, oh, they're actually asleep right now. Um, that was always very important to us, family as well. Okay, so then do you speak both English and Spanish? I do, I speak English, Spanish, and French. Oh, and French too. Wait a minute. So you're in eighth grade and you speak three languages. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's, that is so impressive, Veronica. I, I mean, I know there's a lot more things that we could be impressed about, but just thinking of, um, you know, cause that, that's not a typical thing for, you know, I'm thinking of the, the U S um, it's not a typical thing. A lot of times young people here don't even take a language until they get to high school. You know, my, my, my daughter, who is now in college, didn't take a, a language until she, she took French in high school. And, but she didn't take any languages before that. Same here. I, didn't, I took French when I was in high school. And so it's not the typical thing. But how cool that is. 
three languages. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, well. well <laughs> in, in Canada, it's very common for schools to actually be French immersion from first grade. And actually, when I was in California, when I was in kindergarten, I started taking French classes just for fun. So that also kind of influenced um, the languages that I learned. I'm sorry, I'm only laughing. I took French classes for fun in kindergarten. That's, that's, no, I'm just, I'm just learning so much about you. I mean, no wonder you are, you are far beyond your years. I just, uh, you're, you communicate so well and you have such a delightful personality. And I wanted to point this out. The thing that impressed me when we were setting this up is that you were thinking about me when you said when you set the time no and this means a lot honestly um when your mom said well i don't want her to have to get up too early so let's do it 10 o'clock her time i'm like how cool is that it's like i'm always doing my best to to adapt my schedule to the needs of my guests and how cool that you were thinking about me so i just wanted to say that i really did appreciate that very very much so thank you um so so um so your first commercial was when you were four years old is that what is that right yes what do you now what do you remember about that commercial if anything um I remember being very nervous um I'm I'm generally a very shy person I know it doesn't really come off in interviews but um, I am a pretty shy person. Um, and so I was only four years old. I was like thrown into this completely white room with a single stool. And there was just a lady asking me questions about, I think it was about like a creative idea to um, conserve water or like stop water pollution. And, you know, I was four years old. So I was like, hmm, maybe it's like underwater butterflies or something. Um, but I, all I remember is being like extremely nervous and my mom being like, don't worry, don't worry. And me being like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Well, that's actually pretty cool though. Um, and that's, that's neat that you remember that much because sometimes I'll interview young people and they don't remember their experience, their first experience that much. So and, but what I, what I do find interesting is, so you say you t you're typically shy, and I think it's interesting because so many actors that I have interviewed would describe themselves that way. It's, it's, a, it's a typical thing of, I think, the creative type person. We tend to think, oh, well, they're outgoing, and they love to be around people, and they love to do this, and yet so many of them are just like you, they they kind of like to keep to themselves. Not that they are, you know, not creative people. Often, they they don't mind being around people, but it's just they're not super. They're not always super outgoing. We tend to think that all of them are outgoing. So, so I totally get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so um, your first movie, of course, was Christmas CEO which we all got, which most of us, I, I don't know if everybody's seen it here, but they've heard us at least talk about it. And hopefully most of us have seen it. So how did it come about that you had the opportunity to do this movie? How, what was the story behind that? Yeah, well, um, I had, I got the audition the day after I got rejected from a theater company that I really wanted to get into. Um, and I was, I was really sad. My parents were like looking at other theater companies that I, that they thought I would like. And then I got this audition for a Hallmark movie. And at first I was a little skeptical because I was like, oh, I don't really watch Hallmark movies. I'm not sure how I would, how I would do in something like that. But, um, I did the audition. My best friend actually helped me film it. Um, and then my my dad was actually in the car. He was like dropping my brother off at like a plate or something. And he got a call from my agent and she was, well, obviously he picked it up. He was in the middle of like a work meeting, but my agent never calls us unless it's something super important. So he picked it up and she was like, is Veronica there? And she told him I got the part. And then the whole thing of like, well, you got to move to Ottawa. You got to do all these things. And I was really excited, but I was just like, 
I don't know how it's going to go. I've never been on a movie set. I've never done a, anything outside of the, outside of where I live. Um, I didn't know who the cast was. I literally did not know a single thing about this movie except for the role that I would be playing. Um, but once I finally got to meet the cast, it was like everything clicked and I was so over the moon about it. Exactly. Well, so that's interesting. I, I, I think you were, I will speak to this. I think that you were, um, thing about Hallmark movies, that's got to be something hard. I know that that's hard in Canada because sometimes the Hallmark movies don't make their way to Canada. I mean, how is it most of the movies that we see on the Hallmark channel here in the States are filmed in Canada, somewhere in Canada, but not all of them always make their way to the Canadian TV as easily. It's a little bit different. They're making changes, I know, but um, I can understand you I was like, oh, do I want to be in a Hallmark movie? Because I don't watch Hallmark. <laughs> uh, so I totally get that. Um, what about your parents? Have you have your did your parent were your parents familiar with Hallmark movies? I yeah. Well, my mom is currently nodding. She's like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not sure about my dad, but um, my my parents were really excited. I think it's just the fact that like I've been doing acting since like properly acting since I was about 10 years old so it was like three years of me just doing audition after audition after audition and I finally got something I think they were just more excited about the fact that I would be working on something and I think it really didn't matter what it was as long as I enjoyed doing it right right exactly so you had to make the you had, you had to relocate for like three weeks to Ottawa is that right yeah, for about a month, I was in Ottawa. A month, okay. So so it was you and your mom, basically, is that right? Okay, yes. Yeah. And so was that your first time to be in Ottawa? I had been to Ottawa before a couple times. I When we went there for like a proper vacation, I was really young. But my mom uh, had gone there for some work things. So I'd been there, but I'd never really gone to that many places there if you could say so it was really exciting to like see how everything works in Ottawa like it's really different from where I live I live in like the suburbs Ottawa's like an actual city um but it was it was really exciting I really enjoyed it there we actually went back for um during New Year's um and it, it was a lot of fun I really enjoyed it well that's exciting um so have you so you've been doing acting. Had you taken acting classes then I'm, I'm, or not? Yeah, um, I had been doing acting classes at this acting school in Toronto, Talent Inc. And um, they have a showcase uh, in every February. Um, and I'd gone to their most recent showcase. They didn't have one last year because of COVID, all that. Um, but I'd gone to their most recent showcase, um, after taking about, like, maybe six months of classes. Um, that's where I met my agent, and then I, uh, continue taking most of their classes, and I'm actually going to be doing their showcase this June, which is exciting. Okay. All right. Well, that's, uh, but it, it must have been really something. What was it like being, going that first day to the movie set? It was very nerve wracking. I did not know how anything worked. I obviously I had like learned from the classes I'd taken, but it it was different from he, like hearing about it is way different than actually stepping foot onto the movie set. So like I got to my trailer. I was like, what is life? I'm at the base camp for the movie I'm about to be filming. Um, and then I stepping into the makeup trailer was like a whole thing. I was like, what is going on? Um, and then the second I stepped onto the movie set, uh, Marisol actually greeted me and she was like, oh, hi, it's nice to see you. Um, and I started feeling a lot more comfortable. Um, Marisol and Paul were really supportive throughout this whole thing. Um, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was very nerve wracking. <laughs> I can imagine. I, I, I think and and I find it really interesting what you're saying about it's different hearing about it and you're taking classes and then you actually get there and it's it's always different and you are not alone in that you know I, I think every single actor I've ever talked to when they had their first experience on set 
no matter how many classes they've taken, they still, it's like, what are we doing? I don't know how this is really going to go. And so it, it's it's interesting that even though here you are a young person, you're going through basically the same the same kind of thing and that 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 adult actors go through when they're thrown onto their first set. It's it's always, mm-hmm. it's always it's always that kind of experience. And I can just imagine. I mean, I have not had that experience. I've, I've only been, I've actually only been on one TV film set and it was not, and they were just filming like a talk show. So it's a little bit different, but, um, so what I, I would say though, you are exactly right. You couldn't have asked for a better leading couple for your first, (laughs) they were pretty, pretty amazing. Um, I I know I only know of Marisol. That really, my introduction to her was Riverdale because I was a huge Riverdale fan, and I just absolutely loved her. And then she got to do like a Hallmark movie last year, which which was really good. Um, then, of course, you know, since I work for Paul, of course, I was always here. I'm always hearing everything and watching, but but watching both of them, they were so supportive of you. They would post in their stories all about you. Every time I turn around, it's like, I'm watching to see what's going on in the filming. And they've got videos of you playing music, (laughs) playing the guitar, singing, and and they're just raving about you. And it's so great to see two seasoned actors that would do that for a young person. I was was very impressed. Yeah, I I felt really lucky because I, I was expecting to, like, be, like, only ever talk to them when I'm, like, on like when we're actually filming um but I was I I just felt so grateful that I got to work with two amazing people um and they've really really helped me on this whole experience that's good I'm 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 glad I'm so glad that you had a very positive first experience usually with Hallmark that's the way it it goes I'm not going to say absolutely every single Hallmark set is like that but basically all the ones I've ever heard of almost without exception they're like that and young people are really well cared for on the Hallmark sets and and so you also got to sing and play the guitar in the movie I did (laughs) which is really awesome um (laughs) the funny thing is that Paul Green, who is a musician, has only gotten to do that on a TV, on one episode for a short time of, a, of an episode on Hallmark. The movies, he hasn't even gotten to play the guitar and sing. So, like, he's a musician. He's released albums. And here you are, which I'm so glad. I'm not, I'm, I just think it's, it's, it's really amazing. Here you are. They gave you this opportunity. They gave you a gorgeous song. And you sang it so well. And... I, I know that Paul was so impressed with you because because uh, there was there was a story about you um, um, putting the strings on the guitar if I remember right. Yeah, he was <laughs> for my rap gift. He got me new strings on my guitar because I've had that same guitar for about three years and I'd never changed the strings once. So he bought me new strings and he actually taught me how to string my guitar which was, um, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. That's good. That's cool. I know, I know he was very impressed. He kept talking about how, yeah, she, she was able to put the strings on her guitar. I taught her how to do it. She did it. And, <laughs> um, and that was, and that was cool. He was impressed by that because I'll be honest, I, I wouldn't know how to string a guitar. I, I've, I've, I remember having to, I remember in college, because I was a music major, I remember having to string um, a cello, put it, that was, that was, that was learning, putting a string, replacing a string on the cello, that was, that was quite something, <laughs> it was quite an experience, <laughs> but um, that's cool that, that, that you were able to do that, um, so in filming, so you were there for about a month, so are there any behind the scenes stories that really stand out during the filming of Christmas CEO? Oh my gosh. Um, there's so many, but I can't remember any off the top of my head. I have this, like, um, every morning and every night after 
coming back from set or before going on set, I'd make a little video diary on my phone. So I, I, I'll have to look through those and see if I can find anything. Um, I do remember this one time, um, I think it was the third day I was there, I was very nervous because I had this big scene and I actually don't think that it made it into the movie, but it was this scene where Emma was nervous about playing the guitar and singing in front of people. Um, and she was talking to her aunt about it. And I was really nervous because I had a lot of lines in that scene and there was a lot of emotion to portray. And Marisol just gave me the most amazing advice that I could have ever asked for. She was just so supportive and she like empathized with me and everything. Um, so that's that's just a moment that I'll never forget. That's cool. Yeah, you know, it's true that as a young person in, in movies, sometimes the characters, we only see them for, okay, like five or 10 minutes. You were a real integral part of this film. You had a very significant role almost. I mean, I think that I don't, I don't know how it always gets broken down, but I'd almost put you on the same level as being really a supporting cast member, not, not just, I mean, I don't, and I don't, and I don't know if that's how they break it down in the movie, but your character was such a part, such a strong part of that film. And we saw you so much, so much more than we sometimes do young people. So that was really cool. And you held the emotions, uh, speaking of emotions, you portrayed those emotions exceptionally well. I just want to say you did a great job. It came across so well as we were watching it. You were an absolute delight to watch. I, I, I think I remember the scene where you're getting ready to, your character's getting ready to sing and then you're singing. And I mean, literally that song, that scene, just like stole the movie. As far as I'm concerned, I love Paul, I love Marisol, but Veronica, you you stole that. You stole that scene. And you are the part if I think back of versus CEO, that was easily my favorite scene over any of them. That particular scene, because it just, I don't know, there was just something about the way it all worked. And they did not upstage you at all. You were the you were center stage. And it, and you were, and you owned it. You owned that scene. So very, very yeah. good. Very good on you. Um, that was, that was really neat. And I remember thinking that when I was watching it, I was just like, wow, this is, this girl definitely has what it takes to continue and, and really be a, a major, a major player as you continue to, as you continue to get more experience. So, and as you get older. So I've interviewed a lot of people in the industry over the past few years and a lot of young people. And I'm, I'm watching you. I am watching because I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've got quite a career ahead of you. Thank you. So, you're welcome. So, so, so were you guys able to watch this film in Canada? Was, did it come on um, Canadian TV? Yeah. Yeah, we were. Um, I think we watched it on, it might've been Stack. TV that had the movie on W Network. On, on w Network. There's like um on Stack TV they have W Network. So we were actually able to watch it. And I'm pretty sure um some people in Canada uh, my friend from school she actually told me that she got to watch it on W Network. So okay. So did you guys have a big party, like a watch party when you were watching it? Yeah. Yeah, we had um actually the people who played my parents, Amanda Martinez and Bert Cardoza, they came over and um, Amanda brought her family and Bert brought his wife and we had like this nice party. We had Venezuelan food and, and we all watched it together and it was really sweet. Oh, that's cool. So since you do go to, um, it's, it's, it's a regular school that you go to, like it's a public school that you go to. Um, how was that was have there been any issues now i know things are different because of covid and i know sometimes there's there's not always in person school i mean i don't know how all that I mean, i'm sure i'm sure you went through that i know my daughter went through that when with all the lockdowns and everything um but with going to school and then being an actor um how is that how how has that been as you has 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 that is that impacted your schooling at all? Um, a little bit. Well, it was um, it was definitely different. I was doing in person school 
right like I had done maybe two weeks of school before I had to leave before um before I had to leave to Ottawa uh so I had a tutor um and it was all through zoom and my teachers would just go on like there's virtual classroom google classroom and they would post the work that we did it was definitely different and I did have a lot of catching up to do uh, when I got back but it was definitely better than having to like completely miss everything and um well coming back was obviously a big change um there were I think I had a test maybe a week after I came back and I didn't know anything that was on it <laughs> um but it 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 was definitely different than what I'm used to yeah I, I I can imagine um I guess what's good the positives I could see now is we're kind of we're kind of post we're, we're not quite post-COVID I mean I guess we're not I don't know if we'll ever be I I, I hope <laughs> the day comes when we're completely through the pandemic I, I know things continue to change but but um but the good thing probably is that schools have had to make all these adjustments for online schooling. And so in some ways you could, you may have benefited from that only because a lot of the young people I talked to before all the COVID stuff happened, they either were doing homeschooling or they'd have to miss schooling, you know, and then they'd have to make up the work when they got back. So it's good that, I, mean, I guess it's good that that could be a potential positive that maybe you didn't have you had to make up work when you got back, but maybe you didn't have quite as much to make up as you yeah. <laughs> might have, because I know sometimes that's, that's, that can be an issue. So what is it like, that, what do your friends think of you being in this movie? What was that like? A lot of them were excited. Um, like people that I didn't even talk to, they were like, oh my gosh, congrats. <laughs> um, like, my close friends were obviously really excited for me. And I actually had one friend that was like, oh, okay, which was super refreshing because it wasn't like, oh my gosh, you're in a movie. How was it? She was just like, oh, sick. I'm proud of you. That was it. Um, and honestly, I think I'm more happy with that reaction than like everyone being like, oh my gosh, you're in a movie. That's so blah, blah, blah. Um, Cause it's just like, I, it's a normal thing for me, but I sometimes forget that like, that's not a thing for other people. Um, and yeah, it was definitely different. There's definitely people that I never spoke to that are now talking to me, friends with me. Yeah. Um, but I'm also glad that I've got that, like, you know, some people that I hadn't got the, the chance to speak to before have started talking to me because I've actually made more friends mm -hmm. through conversations, um, which is, is always a positive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually understand what you're talking about because, because now that I get to meet, uh, I have a lot more friends or people that reach out to me because I have all these actor friends. And of course I've met so-and-so or you met so-and-so and how we know, but, but I do understand what you're saying about, it's nice when you just have the act, we are not the actors, but the friends who are like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's it. And like, they just, they don't make a big deal of it. It's they, they're happy for you. They're proud of you, but then you're yeah. also, but, but also just because you got to be in a movie doesn't suddenly mean that you change into this different person and that now you have this glamorous life because as we know, film and TV, it doesn't, doesn't mean that you suddenly have this glamorous life and all these. <laughs> all these things. Yeah. And I think that's, I think it's important for more actors to, you know, talk about, you know, just living a normal life. I don't, like on social media, I know a lot of people try to like make their life seem more glamorous, but I think it's important to sh like show that I'm just a normal kid. I'm a normal person. I go to school, I have friends, I do local community theater. And that I, I think it's important because like not actors are like these super, glamorous people who have like everything in their life is perfect I think it's normal to be a regular human being I love that you said that that is that is probably I mean Veronica that may be, may be my favorite thing that you've said so far I love you saying <laughs> I wish more actors would do it because I would yeah ex exactly I think because 
I know before I started interviewing all these actors, I had this idea too that, oh, actors just, they, they live this glamorous life and they're always going to parties and, and, oh, you got to be in a movie and then they stop. Then you have this idea of, oh, well, they're, they don't do normal things anymore. They're, which actually they do. They still, they still live their lives and they still get up. You know, they, they still, what is it? You still put your pants on the same way. way. <laughs> and I mean, there's all these different things that, you know, you'll hear, but, but, but that's really cool. That, that's, that's, that shows again, just how grounded you are. Your parents have definitely raised you right. And, and so kudos to your parents as well. They have done a good job in raising you. And I, I don't, yeah, exactly. I'm saying the parents don't always get the credit, but it's, but it's, but I always want to make it a point, especially since I'm a mother, I totally get it that. And so, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Um, I did want to ask about, so you also do care packages for people in Venezuela. Is that what, is that what I understand? Can you tell us more about Yeah. Um, we, my family, um, my parents and I, we take donations, um, usually just local donations, like gently used clothing, um, old toys, like, you know, those little toothbrush and toothpaste that you get from like the dentist. Lots of people don't use those. So we take those and we make them into little care packages um, for people in Venezuela who might not have those things available. Um, and we usually send them through our family or through family friends. Um, Shipping. shipping. <laughs> and there's also a local um, organization called the Safety Net where we give what we don't use. Uh, and usually that's like uh, stuffed animals, toys, or like old cooking things that um, people might not have the access to. Also, hotel toiletries. Lots of people don't use that. Um, literally anything that might not be available we bring and yeah it's always it's always nice to give to other people so so how long so how long have you been doing this oh since we moved here I guess <laughs> wow I I yeah I wasn't really a part of it until like recently um especially because we moved so we have a lot more things to do right so wow well how cool that you're doing something like that um you're a young person you're doing that and and that you guys are doing it was, was this just so was this just an idea that 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 your parents started on on their own and, and then you just joined in or was it was I, it because of this organization was it an organization that they got involved in i i think it was more about our family at home um what what they needed um and my mom has actually been doing a lot of research into humanitarian needs um I am very interested in like human rights things like that like social justice all those things so I think it was more of a collective thing um but it was really based off of our family at home oh cool well well I commend you all for doing that that is amazing I I'm it warms my heart to know that people are doing that kind of thing and that young and and it's great that you're doing it at your age because it means you're just going to continue to do it and you're going to continue to bring and, and hope and as you become more active in film and tv you'll even have more of a platform where you can really make these these needs and make other people aware of these needs so that's 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 fantastic yeah that was actually really important to me when I first got into acting it was less about the whole I want to be on tv it was more about obviously acting is one of my like it's a huge passion of mine um especially because I've been doing it since I was like two years old but it was important for me that I would also be able to get a platform to talk about these things especially because at school and in my community it's hard to be heard I remember trying to, you know, start up a fundraiser at school for the people at home. And I was told that that couldn't be possible. So, you know, being able to do this through other causes and now having a platform to talk about that is super important to me. Well, that's awesome. That's, 
say I knew there was something special about you. And the more I get to talk with you, Veronica, the more, the more I realize just how special and how incredible and just how amazing you are. So, I mean, and you truly are. If I'm sure people tell you that, but I just want to let you know, I, I see it. I definitely see it. So, um, all right. I'm sure that we have some questions from our audience members. Um, so let me see who might want to go first. Oh, Paula Waters. Oh, perfect. I will bring you on. All right. Hey there, Veronica. I just want to say when I watched, I looked at you as a seasoned actress. You were that good. Thank so, you. So and that's not a lie. And the question I have is when you watched it with your friends and family, did you critique yourself or did you go back after, watch it alone and kind of go over your role to learn anything? I definitely did. I think that's something that every actor does. You know, um, I watched it back and I was kind of like, oh, I could have delivered that line differently. Or like, oh, I should have done this instead. Or, oh, now I understand what they were saying about this. Um, and it was kind of weird to watch it with my friends, especially because I know that they're super honest people and they wouldn't be scared to tell me um, what they thought. But I think as long as I thought what I was doing at the time was right, I think that's all that matters. And clearly <laughs> people liked it. Good, good answer. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Hi, Veronica. Well, I was very impressed uh, with your acting in uh, Christmas CEO. I thought you, in a few places, you actually stole that show. <laughs> you were very good. And I was just interested in uh, knowing what's on the horizon for you. Are you? Do you have anything in the works when we will see you next? Or is there a possibility? Or do you want to or do you want to stay with Hallmark? Would you like to stay with Hallmark? Um, I think I, I would be grateful to work on anything. Obviously, I had such a great experience with Hallmark, but I do want to be able to branch out into so many different things, you know. Um, obviously, I'm still waiting for COVID to be over because that's a whole situation. <laughs> I, I think it'd be cool to branch out into other things. And obviously, there's so many dream roles that I have. Um, and obviously not staying in just film and TV. I'd love to do stage acting as well. Um, actually, lo um, locally, I'm doing a uh, film study class and I just did a musical at the local theater. So, you know, there's a couple different things, but um, who knows, maybe maybe you'll see me in something else soon. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope so. I hope we see you on film pretty soon. But if, that, if you like the stage, that's good too. <laughs> Do you, like, would you like to do a musical? Is it a musical or anything? Would you, would you I would love to do a musical. I think that they're so fun, especially musical movies. I love musical movies. Um, but, you know, Broadway is always a huge dream of mine. I, I'm still young, so, you know, I never know what could happen. But I think and anything, I would be so happy to work on anything. Wow. That's cool. Good. I hope that all those opportunities arise for you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I hope we see something. Yeah, something else real soon. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, you only get that first once, and this was your first movie. Yeah. What was it like standing in front of that trailer that had your name on it? Mm. It was so surreal. I like ha for a second, I was like, "Am I dreaming? Is this like actually real?" And like, it, it was crazy I never thought that like obviously I knew that I wanted to do acting but I never thought that it would happen so soon so you know like stepping in front of that trailer it had my name on it and I was like oh okay this is like an actual thing that's happening <laughs> like it's um but then the next like the next three weeks were blur and by the end of it I was like so it like actually I I just filmed the movie that's crazy and then watching it was even more surreal. I just, I still can't believe that it happened. And, and, and your reaction when you actually saw your first time, the critics, the, um, the name, uh, you know, on the, when they finished the movie, the rope, you know. Yeah, it well, went like really quickly. I saw it for like a split second and I was like, that's my name, that, <laughs> I, that's me. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, that now, um, do you do you have any other like hobby hobbies that you really like to do when you're just in your downtime? That I... you, just to break away your mind from all your studies and. Yeah, well, I obviously really enjoy singing and guitar, but um, I also enjoy cooking. Cooking is really like fun and therapeutic for me. Um, art, like painting, I do a lot of painting and drawing, things like that. Just simple things to keep my mind off of, you know, school or like the pressures of, you know, waiting for auditions and things like that. I hit my other question was is uh, thinking with having to do with the first but you kind of answered it. You have to go back and look at your tapes or your little videos that you did and cut and come up with your first memorable experience. That that one thing that hit you so hard when you were you know, first on the set, because that would be important interesting to hear. You're such a young child and you have, I hope, a happy future. And but you only get that one first. And I, you got to remember, you know, what was that one thing? Yeah, I think it might have been actually like when Jonathan yelled, like, action for the first time. And I was saying my lines, I was next to Marisol, I was walking up to the school, and I was like, oh, okay, so I'm filming a movie right now. And when I got home and did my little video diary, I was like, <laughs> I was so excited and it was like I wanted to remember everything from this this movie and yeah. obviously if I could relive it I would because it's just it was such an amazing experience well god bless I hope we get to see much more of you well thank you absolutely uh, those are awesome questions thank you Paula wow um I just that you you honestly gave me chills when you were sharing that story just this, just the story because I understand what you're saying about that that had to be surreal you're filming a movie like you're actually filming a movie I I I, I kind of know I kind of know that feeling I've not filmed a movie but I know how it feels when I'm actually doing something that you've dreamed of for all these years and then you're actually getting the chance to do it. So I, yeah, that's, I was thinking those video diaries, you should go through and take a look at them and you should edit them all together and, and have them as a, a special memory. You know, you know, even if you never release them and they're just for you, it'd be really cool so that you have them all put together. That might be a, a cool thing. Yeah. That would be, because that would be a neat. Those kinds of things are neat memories to look back on and, and then you never know, you might share them, you might share it when, you know, when you're, when you're older, or who knows, you might, you know, you might yeah. never know. Um, I was going to ask you, are you planning on doing an album or anything like that? I mean, do you, do you write music or do you, or? <laughs> I try to write music, but it's really hard coming up with ideas and also I have this thing that like I'm sure a bunch of other people who write music they're like oh I got a cool oh that's already a song um so I I do want to take like classes to be able to write music because I think it'd be really cool to like um start writing my own things um especially because I've been doing more covers but I think it'd be cool to do something of my own um I think it'd be I think it'd be fun I think you could bring a very unique uh, sound and perspective that's not out there because you're 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 Hispanic, born in the you know you're from Venezuela, well, uh, but born in the USA. You live in Toronto. You've done the act. I mean, and you really could. I think that you have a very unique voice and a unique perspective. And I so we'll we'll, we'll look for it. We'll look for one of these yeah. days in the not too distant future. Veronica releases an album, she writes her own music, she releases the album, and then she just goes on to not only be an actress, but she's a singer, a musician, and then she does all this humanitarian work, and she's just this amazing, amazing person, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
well that's i well that was i was just i was curious because i just thought that you're you're such a you're such a gifted musician at your age especially i can only imagine you know give yourself a few years of studying and you're gonna just you're gonna kill it no doubt um yeah so is there anybody else who wanted to ask a question because actually uh you all who asked questions you covered some of the questions that i was thinking of asking but you guys asked them so that was great and that's what i love um okay go ahead timmy uh yeah so most most of the questions i wanted to ask have already been answered but i was just wondering if you have any idols anyone you look up to it could be a musician an actor a public uh, person public figure yeah, well, um, there's a couple. I have always looked up to um, an actress named Olivia Rodrigo, who is actually a singer, and she has this huge hit album um, that she released when she was 18, which is like really young. Um, and I've always looked up to her because I just think that she has such an amazing voice and she's such an amazing actress. But also there's this um, actress who, has actually been like a couple things. Her name is Sochi Gomez and she's another Latina teenager who is actually debuting in a Marvel movie soon. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Marvel fan, a huge superhero movie fan. And so she's making a debut in one of the biggest Marvel movies. So I'm, I look up to her a lot because not only she's an amazing actress, but she's like living her dream and she's representing the Hispanic community. Teenage girls all around are, you know, looking up to her. So I, yeah, definitely. Uh, so she will miss. Thank you. Look forward to seeing what's next in store for you. Thank you. That's cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that, Tibby. That, that gave us some more information. I, well, Veronica, I just love the fact that I mean, I still cannot believe that at this age, you're this accomplished, you're this well-spoken, you're this successful. I know people define success in lots of different ways, but as far as I'm concerned, you are successful. You are, you, you have, I know you've got lots of dreams and we're going to see great things from you, but I mean, my goodness, to be at your age and do all that you've done and to just, I mean, I've, I don't feel like I'm talking with a teenager. I feel like I'm talking with a young adult and, and you're just, it's no wonder that Marisol and Paul thought so high, think so highly of you because I see it now. I mean, I, I mean, I trusted them for what I see, but after talking with you and just the way you present yourself, you, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that we got the chance to have this interview I, that you that you were that you, you've been an amazing guest i had absolutely loved having you and so thank you thank you very much lovely thank you so much for having me this has been a lot of fun good i'm glad so as we wrap things up if, if any of you if, if you guys want to unmute and express your appreciation to veronica feel free you can do that so good, Veronica. What would you say is your the favorite quality you have of Paul Green? You spent four <laughs> weeks four weeks with him. What's your favorite quality about Paul? Because there's a I'm lot so, of Paul fans. I'm here. surprised that wasn't your first. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that. He he's he's so sweet. He is um, and very supportive. I think that's one of my favorite things about him. He's so supportive, and he helped me with my nerves being on set my nerves performing for the first time like guitar and singing in front of a bunch of um background actors which was very nerve-wracking I just think that he's such a supportive and kind person and obviously an amazing actor exactly well yeah that was that was a good question I know I had I hadn't asked that so I'm I'm glad I'm glad Paula asked thank you Paula um but if you guys would 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 like to you know, express your appreciation to Veronica before we leave here. Go ahead. You can thank her or say goodbye or whatever you want to say. Thanks for this chat, Veronica. It was really good to get to know you a little better. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you in a now. See your next adventure. Hopefully we get to see you pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Best wishes. I hope you get to do a musical because I would love to see that. And thank you 
thank you. Thank you all very much. All of you are supportive. Thank you for coming out to support Veronica, to support me. And thank you, Veronica. Thanks to your mom as well. And, um, and to your dad, of course, as well. So, all right. Have a great, have a great day. Great. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Well, I would be remiss if I did not say, now, I love Veronica. I absolutely adore this podcast. I loved every aspect of it. But I do have to say, I would not have known just how amazing Veronica was without the endorsement of Marisol Nichols and Paul Green. So I do have to say thank you to both of them for highlighting this amazing young woman that they got to work with. And I just want to thank both of Veronica's parents for being willing to set this up and Veronica for being such an amazing young person. So well-spoken, so kind, so patient. You have no idea how many interruptions happened that particular day. And she was a true professional. So this girl, she's going somewhere. And I want to thank every one of you for tuning in. Whether you were there when we first recorded it, or whether you're listening or watching now. Speaking of, if you are listening, watching, I would so appreciate it if you're on Apple Podcasts, if you would rate, review, follow fantastic if you're watching this on YouTube please give it a thumbs up and subscribe that would be wonderful I want to continue to bring you podcasts like this that are highlighting amazing people in the film and industry film industry um, TV industry books whatever the case might be you know people have a story to tell I want to highlight them so thank you all for tuning in Maybe I'll see you on a podcast recording in the near future. You can join my Facebook group and you are always invited. So thank you so much and God bless all of you. Have a wonderful day, afternoon, night, weekend, wherever it might be.